On today's episode of The Glue Guys, yeah. we have a special guest, Chris Thompson, oh. a drummer from Vampire Weekend. Mike's new friend. And also a Dynamite Nets fan. He's going to join us on the show to do reasons to be positive, things to be excited about, about this Brooklyn Nets season. But before that, Brian and I are going to chop it up and call for Steve Nash to be fired. Hey. Whoa, whoa. That, that coming up next. Welcome back to the Glue Guys. This is Mike here. Say hello, Brian. Hello. Check us out on Twitter at BK Glue Guys. Mm. That's daily.com, The Athletic. Get yourself on the paywall at theathletic.com slash glue guys. A subsidiary of the New York Times. Brian, we missed opportunity. Okay. Can I just say that? Um, we have Chris Thompson on from Vampire Weekend. And your, your hello, your angelic entryway into this podcast mm. i mean one chris has dm'd us and said that he wants you to to give him a hello when he comes on the show is that true i don't believe you but but i think there's a future where you're like the backup singer oh like you're where one i get of discovered people, like, on the podcast and, yeah i've never been to a concert vampire weekend concert but they must have backup singers right like surely uh no I'm... like jennifer hudson does isn't everyone like jennifer is this hudson your way of vying for vampire weekend tickets mike is that, is that... Well, i've never been to it i've never been to a show <laughs> well, so. <laughs> i've never seen music yeah. um yeah this is it the whole yeah this is the whole this is, reason this we, is the whole we... charade okay i'm with it we started this podcast to get free stuff yeah it hasn't worked and out we haven't... <laughs> <laughs> got a single thing. I got some uh, athletic greens stuff, and you've been holding out <laughs> the athletic yeah. greens. What the what the hell? Uh, yeah, they ask wow. the salespeople ask who should we send it to, Brian or you? And I say, give it to me. Yeah. Um, Makes sense. I got the CBD gummies from Eagle Moon Hemp mm. uh, that made me high. That I they actually got get you high. I feel like CBD can't get you high. That's that's a placebo. Did I, you're, okay, did I not? No, no, did I not tell you this? Just real quick, okay. before we get started on the show, again, yeah. Chris is going to come on. We're going to do um, things to be excited about about this Brooklyn Nets season because, you know, so much of the the dialogue around the team is dark. Uh, it's trade requests, vaccination mandates, people getting fired, billionaires flying on private jets. And, and it's all and about Ben Simmons' free throw percentage and the three-point shot. What about what he can do, Mike? I know about what he can't do. What about what he can do? That's, what, that's the Ben Simmons argument himself, and yeah. I appreciate it to a very high degree. Um, but just quickly, CBD gummies. I got sent a package of stuff, free stuff. Didn't order it. Got it. I took it. Um, there was a pack of two gummies in one bag, and I was like, um, I need a sugar fix. Mm -hmm. It was the it was the attempt by Eagle Moon Hemp to sort of, you know, there's like the gray area okay. between a legal amount of yeah. THC and legal, and it was like in the gray area. Anything with, with two, two gummies in it, I would be pretty suspicious of. That yep. feels... <laughs> <laughs> as I did the forensics on that day, yeah. that was what I should have realized as being like, it just having two gummies in a vacuum sealed packaging yeah. should have tipped me off. So I didn't realize I was. But you're you were fine. I, you're, just, you're just a giggle butt when you when you get going, right? I mean, like oh, I, yeah. <laughs> there were so many giggles, and yeah. I had just eaten Dairy Queen, so it was a great day. For me, it a, it's just it's a Russian roulette of just yeah, harrowing anxiety <laughs> attack for weed for me. So better better you than me. <laughs> um, speaking of anxiety, again, we're going to talk positivity, but we had our show uh, post-media day, one of the most exciting media days in NBA history. Mm. We didn't really touch on Steve Nash, and I think Steve Nash had a quote, I think it came out yesterday, Nets, Nets Daily did a fantastic job <laughs> pulling these quotes and really putting it in context. Uh, Matthew Brooks wrote this story. Um, you know, he was asked specifically... Hey, uh, so Kevin Durant seemed to want you fired. Um, how has it been? And Steve Nash did the thing where he says, I have a long history with Kevin. I love the guy. Families have issues. Mm -hmm. We had a moment, and it's behind us. A moment. Um, if you are Steve Nash, okay, how do you f feel right now? It's just How should you feel? it's just family stuff, you know. When when you want to fire your father, you know, <laughs> fire <laughs> fire brother or sister. Um, yeah, I don't know. It feels like Steve Nash is is generally um, a pretty placid dude. Like it doesn't seem like he gets very ruffled for for really any reason. So I take him at his word that he's like, yeah, we fixed it. It's fine. It's all good. Um, which is why, in general, 
you know, we keep going back to this talking point, but him as a sort of political figure more so than, and we'll get into the, why I think it's so important that he has strong assistant coaches behind him because, you know, for a lot of reasons, which is part of the positives, Mike, we got some good assistant coaches. Um, but he's much more of a political figure. And so in, you know, insofar as he's keeping those very rocky waters calm these days, you know, that's what can you, what can you ask? What can you ask for more than that? He's just, you know, well, whatever water under the bridge, you know, if he was a, um, a Lionel Hollins type, we would get a different response, but, but he's not sleepy. Steve Nash, sleepy. Steve Nash asleep at the wheel. What did you expect? Him? You, to you wanted him to hammer jack him. You wanted him to go. He was like, the, the man came from my job. So get ready to ride the bench, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah. Obviously he said the correct thing in the moment. I just think it's a larger issue. Like we've talked about this before. There's a distinct separation between the general manager and the players. Like the general manager is not there in the locker room. So while Kevin Durant may be saying, hey, we need to fire Sean Marks, um, you know, there, there's an easy separation. Again, Last Dance documentary, uh, they all hated Jerry Krause, yeah. yet Jerry Krause, you know, was able to maintain his job and still had a contribution to the six championships in whatever it was, eight years. But um, Steve Nash is, is in the locker room. He is there with them on a daily basis. And what, what Kevin Durant talked about, about his problem, so when he explained at Media Day why he wanted um, a, a change, why he requested the change, it was about culture. It was about the 10-game losing streak, which we detailed again in our pod, which is a very explainable 10-game losing streak, mm-hmm. um, partly because uh, James Harden is just like did not want to be here. Uh, by the way, did you see the quote from James Harden? I don't. I don't think it's true, but I mean, it, he said it, but he was making a joke. Okay. That he lost a hundred pounds from last year. <laughs> <laughs> um, I believe it. I believe he it. does. He, look he really good. he goes up and down so much. It's impressive. That's he, why. That's why I, really I, I, I've said he should be. Level. He should be in the UFC. He could fight in like you know like five different weight classes. <laughs> <laughs> um, the like, it's if you pick apart Durant's words, which I know he loves. He's really not as much as like he may have wanted Sean Marks fired or not. He's really commenting on the day to day culture building of the team, the structure of how the team plays. Because what he was saying was, I've been on teams in the past, and that even when star players are out, like the Warriors and Thunder, when I was on those teams, we still won games. And but but the Nets, they lost those 10 games in a row without me. And other guys should have stepped up and we should have had a structure. Well, that goes to Steve Nash. So, you know, we are entering one of the most exciting seasons in Nets history from a positive and negative point of view. It is the most varied outcome possible Mm. um, going into the situation. So there's one scenario that if, if there's discontent early on, People have made a big deal. I don't know if you listen to Zach Lowe's recent podcast. With I, I heard, I heard the rumblings. I heard people in the Discord, shout out to the Discord, were not happy with that podcast. Okay. W- w- I imagine with Nick Friedle yeah. specifically. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The guy, I mean, okay, here, here's my defense. So if no one listened to the show, we love Zach Lowe. Okay. Huge. Who doesn't? Yeah. Right. How can he not? Um, Nick Friedle is the reporter that covers the Nets for ESPN. And he often takes a very critical tact with this team um, and has over the entire time he's here. Fans of the Nets don't like it yeah, because he's decided to be, that's decided to be like how he views, how he views the team. And uh, justifiably. Yeah. He's he's got a little of the the Frank Isola approach to when Frank was covering the Knicks, you know, a little antagonistic. And he's a different breed than maybe some other kind of reporter. So, and he goes on Zach Lowe's show and <laughs> like just pretty dismissive of the entire Nets possibility that this team could be good, right? Um, regardless, I, to, to get back to Steve Nash, like if there is a head to be chopped off, to be lopped off at the, the sacrifice of the altar of the talent that is on this roster that is unrealized, it's Steve Nash. Like... I still think the order of operations, if this season doesn't go well, is uh, they fire Steve Nash, try to bring someone else in. Maybe it's Mike D'Antoni for a partial season. And and then it's like, then if that doesn't work, then everything blows up. 
Mm. And they trade Kevin Durant, and Kyrie leaves for nothing, and then it's Ben Simmons, Cam Thomas's, and Kessler Edwards' team. It's the Kess Ben Cam show. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm just saying I think the, the most amount of pressure is on Steve Nash at this moment because he has to control the maelstrom that yeah. is your Brooklyn Nets. I, one, one addendum to what you said. If we're trading Kevin Durant, safe to assume we, we'll get something for Kyrie Irving at, at, the, at the same time. Yeah, I mean... Okay. But again, wait, this is the positive episode. What did yeah, I just yeah, do? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to go down the road of like. Yeah. No, none of that's going to happen. This is going to be an awesome season. Okay, so just scratch what I just said. Yeah. yeah. So let's do this. We'll take a quick break. Coming back, we'll have Chris Thompson from Vampire Weekend, big Nets fan. We're going to do things we are excited about this season. Brian, love it, love it, love it, love it. Absolute bird. <laughs> Gotta wake up gotta wake it up i hope chris saw that that madness <laughs> <laughs> brian your hair's been amazing lately by the way thanks look at this chris look at the background what's up guys hell yeah look at you decked out is the is the audio okay yeah it sounds great what do you what okay. mic do you have you probably have a real mic don't you well you know i was trying to work one of these in but um the uh we got a weird ghost in our electricity right now. There's a, this weird ground hum. So I just, I'm just using the computer one. Okay. That sounds great. Um, where where are you? Well, let's... Is it okay if we, if we are... We're, we're rolling. Here, we're rolling. Is that fine? Sure. For me. Okay. Uh, joining us back on... The, so we're coming back from break. Just to, All right. Joining us on the show, Chris Thompson from Dams of the West. Yep. Vampire Weekend. Uh, Chris... This is a podcast. Obviously, there's a YouTube extension. Describe what is happening, where you are in the world. You have a T-shirt and you have a poster, and I think those are guitars, but yes. Uh, uh, there's a lot of instruments. I'm in my studio in Los Angeles, um, and uh, where I work most of the time. And I'm wearing a shirt that I found that is sort of a, a hype-up shirt from you know when I fell in love with the, the Nets, uh, unfortunately. Um, and then also <laughs> behind me, Yes, I know that there's a visual component with your YouTube uh, channel. You know, smash that subscribe, <laughs> yeah. that like button, hammer on, on, on. jacket, please. Thank you. Uh, this is my fan, one of my most prized possessions. It's a family heirloom. Mm. That it's from the O three season, O two O three season. Mm -hmm. And you know when they print up, probably at one one or two two, they printed up posters for both teams. Mm -hmm. And so this poster, NBA that, an NBA champion, like yes, poster. Yes, yeah. an NBA champions. We won it all. Yeah, one of the best days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> what I like is that also a Vince Carter plus Kenyon Martin T-shirt that that they it's sort of the whole it's the whole squad yeah because they and is that Kenyon Martin twice there's just so many like little interesting details on well, it's it Jason it's, Kidd twice isn't it is it oh, no, it's, a, it's a shirt after my and own there's heart, um and there's there's the, we got the coach on the back and oh, everything it's Richard it's Jefferson whole. has hair fantastic yeah. well so great. where did you get this poster that the Nets won the NBA championship um. <laughs> You, uh, I've spent a lot of time, not in the recent the past couple of years, but certainly I've spent a lot of time on eBay just searching New Jersey Nets to see what comes up, mm -hmm. as we all do. Yeah. yeah. As, as the entire Glue Guys Nation does. Of course. Um, uh, eBay.com slash glue, 10% off. Your, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> Don't uh, do that. That's yeah. that's where my gut is Keith Bogan's uh, custom <laughs> <laughs> jersey. Still have that. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I found it. I, I bet if last time. I checked, which was a while ago. They they sort of had a box, so there are still some available. If you want to join Ooh, me in this alternate world history, damn, I'm, I'm looking box. it up. Um, there are some amazing. If you just, I mean, I googled uh, on eBay, not googled, searched New Jersey Nets championship poster. They are fantastic. There's an Ed O'Banion, <laughs> um, fantastic Jason Kidd, a Keith Van Horn posters back. Uh, Derek Holman with Deliverance mm. as the. I don't know if you guys remember that one. Um, this is fantastic. What, what has happened to posters? Um, well, Chris, thank you for doing this. This is a pure dream. Thanks um, for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here when the Nets are already 1-0 because we won media day. True. We're already 1-0, undefeated. Um, do you think they should have media days uh, for music? I remember watching the Eagles documentary and they had like press conferences. You guys don't really... Do you have to do press conferences as musicians and does that happen anymore? Not a lot, to be honest. Uh, Vampire Weekend did one once in 2010 when we played Indonesia. 
Mm. I remember um, that I was there. Yep. Yeah. That was yeah. great. Uh, <laughs> I think it was because we were we were just so far from home and there it was just easier to kind of sit in one place as people ask questions. It was we the Eagles, we are not. Um, yeah. but it was that was sort of the one time that that happens. Um, I think generally it's more, you know, people want that personal touch. Mm-hmm. It's more Always. the locker room huddle, more the locker room huddle <laughs> than the press conference, I think. Totally. Um, do you think winning Media Day, as they did, they completely dominated, does that have any impact on your feelings and thoughts about this season? I mean, no, of course not. <laughs> I mean, I, I do, I did agree with one point you guys made uh, last episode um, that I don't think that they should have to do the interviews in their uniforms. Thank you. Uh, that, it's not even it's that, not even just a temperature thing. It's just like it's, it's, it's weird. Like we're for show. We're we're play, we're we're hoopers, man. And there's a weird element to it that I I it, find like it is just, yeah, like shiny ob- shiny object on the pedestal thing. That's it's got a weird power dynamic in both ways that I don't love. Right. Think, yeah. You know, just let them, let them wear what they want. They're adults. They're you know, if they want to go up as hoopers, that you know, that's their choice. Um, but uh, no, I mean, I think you guys covered this probably plenty, but um. Media Day doesn't really strike me like the place for actual honesty or, you know, it's a place for narratives. It's a place to to like say what you think you should say. I don't get the sense that there's a lot of like raw emotional truth. Mm. Players are smart enough to know that. Why would you give that away for free on Media Day? Yeah. When you can put it on your Twitch stream. That's that's exactly. where, that's where that goes. Yeah. Um, who would you most want to see raw emotional truth from? If you had to pick. We asked this. I think we asked this to Alex Schiffer when we had him on last week the truth serum question like who would you most want to dig into their brain and actually know what's going on you know what i kind of feel like maybe if i could combo i'd do marks nash because i feel like they're sure we'll see how long they one or the other last or whatever this year but um i do feel like their perspective is pretty interesting in all this and ultimately their public facing a uh, job is to not be controversial and take a step back and support the players. And so I think that if anything, their answers are always going to be l- the most calculated or something. Yeah. So I would be very curious to hear like how the summer was for them. Cause I don't think that what they said on media day was necessarily, you know, how they actually feel. Yeah. And but, but, this is very unfair to Steve Nash. Like he's a tremendous competitor. What two MVPs as a player rose up from, Santa Clara, I think, is where we went to school and yep. became the MVP and all that stuff. Extremely competitive person. But as a coach, I don't I don't see the fire. I don't see the I don't see the drive. Okay. This, this is some I skip skip Bayless ass. Him shit caring right more here. about TikTok, yeah. doing TikToks <laughs> with his kids. Okay. No, I, I would like to know what he thinks in particularly. I mean, my truth serum answer was Kevin Durant just because I really wanted to get like I want to get what why the trade request really happened. Like he referenced uh, that the team had a ten game losing streak, and we went through the ten game losing streak on the last episode. Like it's actually very explainable what happened. Um, you know, partly uh, COVID vaccine issues, mandates, and James Harden being a bad basketball player for an unexplainable stretch, and then deciding to leave the team. Um, but it's still like. Like, was Kyrie, how, how is Kyrie's decision to opt back in? Was it because he didn't get the contract extension? Did that make KD mad? Or was it the fact that Kyrie's still on the team make Kevin Durant mad? And you know, do, did he really want Nash and Marks fired? Or was he just trying to make things, make it Happen. uncomfortable, mm-hmm. right? Because there, there was reporting that Kevin Durant was willing to make things uncomfortable. And then he ultimately decided not to. Um, and now he's back. And, and that's a positive, and seemed, Mike. Yeah, and he seemed he seemed thrilled. He seemed yeah. overjoyed. <laughs> yeah, 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 as so, always. Great segue, Brian. I know mm-hmm. you're you're a master of the communication arts. Uh, mm-hmm. Today on the episode, we're going to be positive. Chris, when I've talked to you on DMs on Twitter, you're a positive person. You seem try to, try to be. You seem excited about the team. So I thought, well, let's take this opportunity. Let's tap into that well of positivity. And let's pick out, each of us can pick out a number of things, five things that we are most excited about this season. As our guest, Chris, what was, do you have a list of five or is there, is there, 
more <coughs> varied. I mean, my, I Mike's asking if you if you did your homework. That's what yeah. this is. What this so <laughs> I'm treating both you and Brian as the yeah. same person. Yeah. On this show, uh, which is you know, did you do your homework? I yeah. did it sort of last minute. Yeah. I was you know as always, doing Chris some, doing some stuff I, last Chris, night, but this I is did your, it this morning. Th this um, is a trial period for you to be on the show, right. and I really <laughs> this, I need a, you to come through here. Okay? An auxiliary glue guy. Um, <laughs> the I want to say before I get to the positivity, okay. which which is there at certain levels, I do think that I, I do think that I wanted to say that I think my positivity as a Nets fan comes from the decades mm -hmm. and the context and how Time. awful yes. we've generally been. That. And you know, I think like if if you if you've been around for a while, and I'm I know that there are Nets fans who have been around longer than me, but um, you know, like this is like, I mean, I remember the clean sweep day was like such an incredible day, like an incredible feeling. It like was, oh my it god, it was pride. It was a it was pride parade in New York City. It was like, it, we, what, we a, played, what a joyous environment to get the tech the tweets. You know, had, it was amazing. Vamp Vampire Weekend had played Glastonbury that day, which is oh like that god. big like forty thousand people like oh my god and then like wow oh my god uh it was just <laughs> did very, they announce like, it at glass yeah, yeah, yeah. everyone's like the killers, the, yeah. um, the killers stopped their headline set <laughs> said guys breaking from woes we got yeah. a woes bump um no but uh like you know I, I just feel like there's been so many lows and part of i think the um the fatalistic humor uh and cut just context of being an s fan is like Historically, we've been so bad and so inept and just like, it's only ever been like, oh great, we got a win in there. And then, you know, like the ceiling has, has never really been other than the time we won in 2003. True. Has, has never been like championship level that, you know, like I think that there's, there's always, there's a basic level of positivity of this couple of years and a lot of drags on, I wouldn't say it's been fun. Yeah. But there's like, there's, there's chances and opportunity that I'm not used to. So it's like, Cool. We'll see what happens. If if we don't win, that's normal. And and on the yeah. other side of that, there's an emotional moat that you build up against the bad news too. Like you expect the, yeah, truly yeah, expect the bad. Yeah. Like when Kevin Durant asks for a trade, it's like yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. Yeah, of <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what, it will ruin my summer. But yes, that was the uh, that was kind of the thing. The clean soup day. I was I was wondering, and I we'll see. Kind of feels like I was wondering what the the aura of the franchise could that counteract the greatness of Kevin and Kyrie. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it, the the badness of the Nets is sort of like maybe overpowering the good, the it, skill of the two superstars. It is, it's leeching into them, yeah. Yeah. But if you uh, ask but, some Nets fans, they would say that Kevin and Kyrie have screwed up Nets culture. The Spencer Dinwiddie, Joe Harris. Remember how the D'Angelo Russell, how exciting. Remember that Kings game? Our arch rivals, the Kings? Oh, my God. Oh, my the God. Kings. The, the Kings, there's going to be a 30 for 30 Kings v. Nets, and mm -hmm. it's going to be two games, but it's going to be fantastic. Um, um, but I just want to get that out of the way. Yes. Because, so, so there is positivity. I'm aware that like this team is still sort of gnarly in a lot of ways. But like, let's be. Po I was told to be positive, so let's be positive. There you go. And and I think Brian, you'll agree with this. It is in true glue guys fashion to even when we're about to do something positive, is to couch it in dread, negativity, f for longing for a future where it's never going to exist. Can us, I even right? that expand this into it's a Northeast slash New Jersey thing? Is like the the, <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> the dread. Uh, component or to to preface everything but yeah but let's go positive mike okay uh chris uh wait can you just flash your i just want to see what how you wrote it is it on a little it's very piece minimal of it's on a little like a uh, note card okay very good okay brian where's your list i i have the equivalent of that okay. on a on my <laughs> desktop but yeah okay uh chris start us off uh why why are you excited what is the thing you're excited about this season my a thing that i'm excited about for this upcoming next season this is my guy Ben Simmons. He's back, baby. <laughs> That's top of my list too. Top of my what list. What a an incredibly skilled basketball player. Now, does is he incredibly skilled at every skill in basketball? No, eh, maybe not. But at most of the skills in basketball, most certainly. Um, and I feel like this also. I also feel like he kind of speaking of uh, the legendary Nets culture of the early teens, twenty teens. Um, you know, he's a classic Nets project, right? Like an undervalued, distressed oh, asset. Anthony Bennett. Come on. Oh, my God. Um, Don't. Remember getting uh, hyped for that signing? Oh, my God. Uh, just, so he's a distressed asset that I feel like, and, you know, granted, he, he was, we gave up 
a big piece to get him, but still, um, you know, I feel like he, he, I would like to think he's motivated. It seems like he's motivated. He's out there doing podcast interviews, chopping it up. That to me presents something of, um, you know, of a certain, at least a base level of confidence that he, he's ready to play. He's like, most people don't know that. Muhammad Ali did a podcast interview before the Thrilla in Manila. Like he, right. like, the podcast interviews is a long history in sports leading to greatness. Just wanted to add that in. Yes, of just you know, uh, he seems like he's he's ready to play and put the last year plus whatever behind him. Um, and I'm I'm excited because I do think being excited about him is also a smaller version of being excited about the team on paper, which has also been true for a couple of years and hasn't really worked out, but mm-hmm. although almost did, uh, you know, two years ago, but um, the, yeah, I mean like the skill, definitely like a few holes, but like the, uh, a few holes. Yeah. The, I feel like the positions that are the hardest to fill the superstars, the shooting, the stuff that teams want. I think the Swiss army knife that Ben Simmons can be when he's healthy and playing, we've got all that. And I feel like if it clicks, which is a big if, like, we'll be sick. Yeah. So. And to add on that, like, we talked about this in a previous episode, but at times, at for long periods of time last season, the on-court product, just entertainment-wise, was a bit of a slog during the James Harden era. And for that reason alone, I'm pretty excited to integrate for a, a fully integrated Ben Simmons, just because, you know, in his quotes during media day, playing faster came up multiple times, you know, that kind of stuff. Makes me excited, you know. You want to wa- you want to watch something you're enjoying, and you know wins are great, but also like that that James Harden led offense was, holy God, was that boring to watch? Yeah. Besides that little stretch of time we first got to the Nets, yeah, when James Harden was playing real basketball, and then it just devolved into like the lineups when it was we, uh, James Harden with Kessler Edwards, Dayron Sharp, James Johnson, and Patty Mills, disgusting. Ben Simmons, exciting. They're, like, as you said, Chris, it's it's very Netsy in that he's a net. Like, he's the perfect uh, unrealized potential. There's some issue overall. He gets shoved into the team. This is his second chance with some team. Um, I, I, I had him on my list, too. I had him even more specifically of, like, the thing about him in Philly was, of course, Joel Embiid's amazing. Um, but those two, there's classically like, is there a fit, right? Is there, couldn't those two elevate each other's games to a point where they could win a championship and they didn't do it together. And if you talked, if you listen to Ben Simmons talking about JJ Reddick with JJ Reddick, he really hit on the point of when Embiid was out and they, the Sixers went on a winning streak and it was like JJ and there's like other shooters on the floor, Bellinelli all these other guys with the 76ers, and that's when they went on, like, on a 16-game winning streak. Ben Simmons, like, I I really hope Ben Simmons is good for the Nets' sake, and also that, like, can we see Ben Simmons in shooters, right? The Nets have so many, so many ability, so much ability in terms of lineups to do Simmons with KD, Kyrie, Joe Harris, Patty Mills, Royce O'Neal, Seth Curry, right? Like, they have so many combinations of shooters that they can put around Simmons, <clears throat> Simmons has never been on a team, really, besides that stretch with J.J. Redick and Bellinelli and people like that, where he just had shooting all around him. And the thrill of Ben Simmons is this guy can grab the rebound on the defensive end of the floor, push it all the way up, and he's one of the best in the NBA, if you look at statistics, on creating three-point shots for his teammates. And, of course, like it's not like Kyrie and KD are going to be playing off the ball from Simmons. But, like, we're going to get units where it is it is Simmons with Curry and Patty Mills and Royce O'Neal and, put like, Joe Harris, like, just, like, randomly within the second units. And we're going to get to see, like, what that actually looks like, what space is created when Simmons is playing with all shooting. And, like, on the other end, it's, like, if he plays with Nick Claxton, uh, the, that won't happen. But, like, there's also the fun side of that being, can you imagine what a Nick Claxton, KD, Ben Simmons front court could be in terms of switchability and defense like Simmons has there's just he's just way more fun as Brian's like it's just like a way more fun player he has the holes very glaring holes but uh as Christian Winfield tweeted out he's shooting free throws in practice right now oh, swishing love it. <laughs> love it like he you know what if he comes out he's in he's in shots how exciting would that be 
Um, Brian. Yeah. What's give me another one on on your list? Igor Kukosev. Kukos Kukoskov. <laughs> A name? Are you familiar with anybody here familiar with that name? Because that's the, the assistant new, coach. That's the new assistant coach. Because you know we talk about Steve Nash uh, being a. I, pri- did, wait, I, I did not anticipate Igor with, popping with up the on full this. With, the, of the list, with all maybe. the flair yeah. of the accent and everything. Um, yeah, I wanted to lead with. I did a deep dive on Igor. Um, so Nash obviously was at his best when he was backed up by D'Antoni. Um, kind of, a, he's a great politician. We like Steve Nash's and his ability to, to, to calm these, these waters. Uh, but, and in terms of on court praxis, maybe not the floor general he was as a player, potentially. I don't know. Maybe he's got something to prove this season. We'll, we'll see. But in the absence of that, uh, the guy's chops, Igor's chops are, are second to none. He was there during the sun's period, uh, <clears throat> sort of under the tutelage. I mean, this is sort of post D'Antoni, but still got the inflection of, of the D'Antoni offense, had a stint with the jazz. It's been around, was teaching the Euro step in the year 1999 of our Lord. Oh. And it was, and brought, and is credited <laughs> the king of the Euro step. <laughs> yeah. It was credited the, for the God, the Godfather, the Godfather of it. Uh, and, and is credited for popularizing it in in the u.s game so a forward-thinking basketball mastermind okay potentially uh lurking in in our management uh so i'm excited because i feel like steve nash needs forward-thinking masterminds in his staff and not to say that you know we haven't you know that other people haven't been there and, and done great work whatever it's just uh you want some real credentials back there and and also you know serbian glow up you know is part of this this enormous phenomenon in serbian basketball so um you know, sh- shout out to Serbia. Can I ask one one question about what you said? Yeah, is you sort of you sort of want to like give give a pass on Steve Nash? You know, he's been the coach for a few years now, and granted, it's been wild circumstances, but I I would say he definitely has something to prove. Yeah. Don't you think? Totally. Like he's, well, he's, he I, I like great. to, I think about it as like min-maxing, you know, like what is he good at? Like he's good at the actual sort of personality management potentially. I don't know. I mean, we're all here again today after some, some crazy stuff. Uh, so in that sense, he, he did the job in, in terms of getting people organized to the extent that they actually show up on, on day one. Um, but I don't, I just don't, I feel like I don't need to trust him <laughs> for on court things at this point. He's he represents mostly, uh, uh, you know, an ethic or something, something more immaterial than than that. Uh, and I actually, you know, I kind of like the idea of, of dividing the labor of, you know, a, your your actual X's and O's guys not being the figurehead of the team if you don't need him to be. It'd be great if he was, but you know, positivity. I'm working with what I got. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um- I'm going to turn. This is both a, a positive and a negative. Uh, Igor, if you don't know, he he was brought over to be the first European to work as a full time member of a college basketball coaching staff in 1999 to the University of Missouri. Do you know who the coach was at the University of Missouri in 1999? A, a glance right over it. Who was it? Quinn Snyder. Yes, right. That's how the Jazz connection. Yeah. So this is Sean Mark slowly infiltrating Steve uh, Nash's staff with Quinn Snyder. Mm-hmm. There you go. Heads. Yeah. And Quinn Snyder is going to take over this team midseason, and the Nets are going to win an NBA championship. Positive. So thank you. Thank you, Igor, uh, for that. Chris, uh, what is your number two? My number two is I'm feeling positive about Kyrie's next contract. Oh, nice. Okay. I, f- I feel like, I feel like, um, and granted, I would just sort of the grain of salt uh, media day stuff we talked about earlier, but, um, you know, it kind of feels like, I don't know the man, I know the basketball player and the public entity, but it feels like when he wanted to leave, which seems pretty obvious he did, uh, and he found the market not what he expected it to be, that I think, you know, he made the decision that was right for him and his family to opt back in. He's back on the nets. I'll always, I always want to give him the benefit of the doubt because of, of this era and that picture of him with the nets hat, like, I do feel like he is, some part of him is a Nets fan. Mm. Uh, Some part of his younger self, you know, um, that I feel like he's going to play really hard. I think I could see obstacles getting in the way of that and maybe it not following through. But I feel like intention, his intention for the year is I'm going to play my ass off and I'm going to get a max contract. I don't care where it is. It's probably not going to be on the Nets. Maybe that's already broken, too broken. But regardless, I think that... um, I feel like he 
he wants and he sh- his talent, obviously, he should get another max contract that I'm feeling positive that he's going to speak with his play this year and he's going to get it. Yeah, I, I, I do agree with – so I like chip, him, chip on his shoulder Kyrie on my list. He's rarely had a real chip on his shoulder. He's always kind of floated from – after they won the championship in Cleveland – you know, he, he gets traded to Boston because he knows LeBron has kind of orchestrated, was trying to orchestrate another trade for Kyrie out of town. Um, he's never really had a true chip on his shoulder since winning the championship. He's always kind of gone. When he went into Boston, he thought he was going to be like this galvanizing leader for the team, which didn't happen. He comes here with Kevin Durant. There's not really a chip on his shoulder then because they're like, we're just going to dominate the NBA, but we're going to wait for KD to come. And then there, uh, we all know what happened there. This is a there's a there's a there's a chip. There's a definite chip on that shoulder, um, and I as an impinged shoulder, which is something we have to keep watching about. That was from many years ago. But the I do agree with Kyrie when he was talking about this about the stigma of not being vaccinated was that there's this belief out there that he doesn't want to play basketball, right? And for the most part, you know. Part of it's true because he has disappeared at times. Like he disappeared randomly this during last season too, and we still don't really know why he disappeared. But when Katie was out that first season, Kyrie carried the team, and Kyrie for the most part, besides injury, because he's just a small guy. Like he plays, he does play. It's not like he is. Um, you know, I don't know what comparable it would be, but like he plays basketball, like that's his job. Uh, so I, I'm also excited for the possibility. I'm not saying it could definitely happen, but like I'm excited for the possibility of a version of Kyrie where he is motivated on the court. I do think the Nets should give him load management. Like they should give him two weeks off during the year and schedule his PTO now. Go. I'm sure Vampire Weekend doesn't have ADP. Uh, it's a software service where you schedule PTO. <laughs> um, I'm sure that's not how you guys really do things. But uh, he should schedule his PTO right now in the net system and say, you know, uh, I get seasonal defective. What, what's the one where you get sad effective? in the winter? Effective. effective. <laughs> Def- defective yeah. is good, though. That's, yeah. uh, <laughs> I, uh, I get that. I'm going to fly to Miami for two weeks and, and take my respite then during the, the cold winter months of January. So... I think they should schedule that now and just let like let it have him look forward to that on the calendar. I'm excited for Kyrie Irving. Brian, do you have I know you have to go soon. Yeah, um, I, bought, I bought like an extra couple minutes. We're good. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um wh- why don't you give me one of yours right now? My well, I'm I'm kind of wanting to combine them all into one just cuz like in general it's sort of wings. It's all wing centric. Very excited mm-hmm. for actually having some medium-sized players back in our in our fold um because that was speaking of min-maxing, we were doing a lot of min-maxing on on the court last season um rotation-wise uh with smallies and biggies. Like but now we got a lot of mediums. And uh so like the combination of Joe Harris, I'm really excited about TJ Warren. Uh, I don't know if that's if that's right or not, but the the Matt Brooks hype train uh, video for TJ Warren got me got me hyped, um, and I and I'm kind of beginning to to buy some of the the hype around that, uh, and then also like Camp Thomas coming out of the uh, in, into media day saying all the right things about his main focuses being three point shooting and playmaking, which is a little bit different from the sort of you know. The Kobe Bryant esque um, style of of ISO scoring language, you know, that we had heard in the past. Everything uh, from preseason last year uh, into summer league had been about his just like his scoring ability and how he's a, a you know top of the top of the line scorer and all that. Now he's at least understood that he's got to shift that narrative just a little bit into playmaking, three point shooting stuff. Um, and then going back to Joe Harris stuff, obviously haven't haven't seen him in a while, and just love to have him back, love his presence. So I'm kind of putting that all into into a wings umbrella. Aaron Fever, one of our uh, listeners, said uh, we spent a whole year without the sensual glow of Joe Harris's three and fist pump. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna pop like a balloon when we get one this season. Yeah, wings, wings, baby. Let's let's have a, t- a real team. Let's not have a, co- a completely end of the spectrum roster that doesn't make sense really in the modern nba it's wings league it's exciting uh chris got one more for us or you got how many more do you have uh, i can do i think there's a, i can do a lightning round to get to get to all five My number three 
is I'm excited for the Bruce Brown revenge game mm. on March 19th of 2023. Circle it. Wait, circle it. What? It's circled. How are you excited for that? He's going to destroy us. He's going to float all over our bodies. Well, I feel like, I don't know. I'm excited because I feel like he, I've seen this on Nets Twitter a bit, but like his defection and his like sort of casual De- honesty, his casual honesty of just like, yeah, it's a little crazy over there. I'm, I'm glad I'm not there. Like th- that's kind of what hurts the most and fuels a lot of the, the even trying to get positive is tough. Cause it's like the foundation is like, not, it's just so wacky. Yeah. Um, but I think that when I was looking it up, it looks to be a Sunday afternoon primetime game. So ABC, the schedule makers knew that this was they on understood. everyone's calendar. Yeah. With Bruce Brown coming back. It's a primetime game. Uh, my number four is I'm looking forward to not being soft. Mm, sure. The Marquis Marquis Morris, Marquis Morris, Morris treatment. Yeah. He, he Marquis- really knew how to lean into that talking point, too. <laughs> he's, he's a good brand manager. I mean, I feel like that's his, his career is that, yeah. right? Like, is that's who he is. That's who they kind of both are. He's out of the three to it and stuff. But, like, you know, I think it's, like, a silly quote. But, you know, I miss the days of Jared Dudley taunting the now net <laughs> legend Ben Simmons. You know, like, there was, yeah, like, yeah. there was something, speaking of Nets culture again, that there was, like, we were still probably kind of soft, but um, there was something, like, there was at least some fight back and, you know, I think maybe his assessment as Marquise is 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 what it is, but he kind of present, min-maxing, maxing his own skill set. Yes. Um, but I do think he's not wrong, is that, like, uh, there could be more backbone in general. Maybe that's kind of what KD, I, it seems like Kevin wanted him on the team. Like, that was part of the 10 games. No, Kevin streak, doesn't, he doesn't, of, doesn't get involved with, I don't know if you listen right. to me, dude. he doesn't get involved <laughs> right. with personnel. Right. Yeah. right. Um, and the, the fifth thing, which I kind of mentioned earlier, and is more of a hope, than a um, a, than hope, a, 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 a a thing that I'm positive about is I just really hope they're fun to root for mm. because even when they the Nets have been bad it's like it's sports it's supposed to be fun and just it's been like it's been a real grind yes. the last couple of years as a fan and I'm there this attachment formed before my brain was fully formed it's like right. too deep I can't get rid of it but it's like been kind of a bummer so I really hope that it's like Whatever it shakes out, trade deadline, obviously would love a championship, but I just hope it's fun to root for them. And, like, there's they're playing. Looks like they're having fun. Just the last couple of years, even with all the talent, it's been a drag. So that's my that's my main – I'm going to be positive. Like, they're going to be fun this year. I think as, like, a service, Brian, that we should do a, a guide for Nets fans to enjoy the team. Mm. One of them is, like, not to follow Kyrie on social media. I think that's a bummer. Yeah. Ultimately, um, it, like th- that's part of my little bit of my less enjoyment. Yeah. But yeah, I think if they like <laughs> this team could be super like super fun, as weird as it sounds, as like innocent as it sounds to see them. If Kyrie, Katie and Ben Simmons all play basketball with all the shooters around them, that should be a super fun team. Yeah. Right. Like that should be a very exciting <laughs> up and down the floor popping threes all over the place, individual skill, incredibly, all three of them are different. There's no real duplication. They all should enhance each other at some point. Um, Mm. Yeah, we can also, like, recontextualize some things. Like, people came down in a weird way with, like, Kyrie saging. Kyrie, yeah, like, Kyrie saging stuff. Uh, And, like, that's a quirky, funny thing to do if in a certain light. But, you know, everyone kind of took it and ran with it. It was like, oh, that's a crazy and and dark thing to do or something. You know, it kind of had this, like, strange twinge. Just a little, just a minor, you know, recalibration. It's 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 his culture. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It'd be like me lighting menorah. Like, who's, you know? (laughs) Yeah, no, if I, I went would. around to every arena and just lit a menorah, that would know? be quirky. That would be quirky of you. That would be. That would I be personally, quirky. I like the sa- I like the sage thing. I, I like, like the, the sage, sage thing cool. too. I, you know, I get I got some Palo Santo back here. I light I light some fires. Different than sage, but you know, still lighting fires. I'll go real quick. Uh, T.J. Warren comeback time. I'm excited to see him just being like a Jamal Crawford. Another classic Nets reclamation project. Truly. Just fantastic. Like, there's a version of this team where, like, he would have been the leading scorer this season um, with everything blew up, yeah. potentially. Uh, me falling in love with Royce O'Neal, I know it's going to happen. I'm excited for it to happen. Somebody, to that point, uh, put a, a great video on Twitter of uh, a game in which um, he just trolled Jalen Brunson in particular, didn't shoot a single shot, passed the ball immediately, and just hard fouled Jalen Brunson as soon as he, <laughs> as soon as he touched <laughs> the ball. And that kind of energy that, you know, paired with Markeith Morris. We could use a little of that. Um, 
and it, this isn't really nice to say, but uh, you know, let's say the season doesn't go that great, and then KD wants to trade again. Hey, I can get on board with uh, trading Kevin Durant. Classic, for classic right glue guys. <laughs> that's I could, that's uh, yeah. how many podcasts could we do about that? Like if you know it comes out, it's like Shams reports that Kevin Durant has now decided to sit out and wants to be traded. This is the most classic smelts. Like we just did, you know, you know thirty minutes of positivity <laughs> to end on the most sour note. Possible. I don't hate that. Yeah. I don't hate trade them. If they got Scotty Barnes, I'd be excited. Okay. Well, <laughs> well that's falling like a well, lead balloon, Chris. I thought he was. I thought he wasn't on the table. Yeah. that's what I heard. I heard Scotty wasn't True. on the table. Yeah. Playing um, hardball. Thank you so much for presenting a Nets championship poster and your T-shirt to come prepared. You had your list. I really appreciate it. Um, thank you for being here. I don't know. Is uh, anything you want to plug? <laughs> like, is there is there things that you want to tell people about? Not um, that that's why you're here, but you know, we're here. To uh, plug. Vamp- Vampire Weekend for for albums in stores now. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. And also, I've, I've started, in the last year, started, I'm in a new jam band, California's fastest growing new jam band called Taper's Choice. Ooh, so sweet. So my, my two 16-year-old uh, passions were Nets and jam bands. So I'm sort of coming back around. When are we, um, when are we coming to Brooklyn? When can we see? Uh, we play Brooklyn in April. I th- hopefully, we'll get back early next year. Okay. Next time, um, we'll, ch- we'll check in halfway through the season and see how our positives are working out. I'll keep, I'll keep this... <laughs> Yeah, and please we can check back put in. that like in the frame of your uh, Nets championship poster. Uh, thank oh. you again so much. Uh, Brian, find us on Twitter at BKGlueGuys, NetsCilia.com, The Athletic. The whole deal. Everyone knows. We're out of here. And S- YouTube, smash. Smash it, always. Bye, everybody. Bye.